Sentinel Mindset. A major change to recruit more police officers in Ontario. The Ford government dropping the cost of police college and lowering the requirements to, rep- to apply. Despite high demand for new officers, some critics are suggesting this move will lower standards just as policing gets more complex. Here's CTV's Dave Charbonneau. <coughs> For many of these recruits, getting hired by police and entering police college has been a long road. I served in the Canadian Armed Forces for 11 years as a, as a reservist within the infantry, um, so the concept of service was always important for me. Now, the Ontario government attempting to get more officers onto the streets is lowering the requirements. No post-secondary education will be required, and tuition at the Ontario Police College will now be free. It feels great. You know, you're already getting the opportunity to work a career uh, that most people dream of, and on top of that, to get the tuition paid for is just an extra, you know, feather in the cap. It allows for me to, uh, you know, put those funds elsewhere while I'm gone to training. This will allow them those opportunities to fulfill potentially their lifelong dream of being a police officer. The government insists they have to do this to boost police forces across the province and deal with a growing crime problem. We need reinforcements. We need more police officers on our streets. Not everyone supports this. Some see lower standards when policing is growing more complex. If you make it easier to become a police officer, uh, in theory, all manner of people from different racialized groups and from harder to reach communities, it would be easier for them to join police services. Um, I think though that the answer for getting people into policing is not to lower the bar, but rather to make the qualifications process that much more accessible and open. But for these recruits, savings on tuition and affirmation they're heading into a field with short supply and heavy demand. I want to be a police officer just basically to, to help out those in the community, um, to make a, a change in those those individuals' lives, whether it be small or big. Ottawa's been, you know, it's been a great city to me so far, and I look forward to being able to give back and the capacity that I can as a police officer. Hey everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day. We just saw a video right now uh, uh, that was actually posted late last year uh, about the standards being lowered amongst police services to attract more people. And, uh, you know, before we get introducing our guest, I also want to compliment this art- uh, this video on an article that recently also came out from Philadelphia, and the heading is, With Police Departments Facing a Hiring Crisis, Some Policies Are Being Loosened to Find More Cadets. And basically, the Philadelphia Police Department is seeing success in more recruits passing the entry physical fitness exam Thanks to a law that's changing the standards and that is lowering it. And we will put a link to this article, but basically it's basically lowering the standards, just lowering the physical standards to get more people in because there is a hiring crisis. Now, in my humble opinion, before we introduce our guest, I think there's something really wrong here uh, with this process because uh, to be able to be in peak performance and to be able to be at the top of your game to do the job of policing is, is important. But don't take my opinion today. Today we have retired staff sergeant with Toronto Police, Steve Somerville, who had an amazing career with the police service. And one of his main functions in his role was to basically train new cadets getting into policing at the CO Big College and the C. The Ontario Police College. Ontario Police College. And if you take a look at this wonderful photo here that we have coming up, I, I want to just let the viewers know this is not Tom Selleck, okay? <laughs> this is Steve in 1990, 1990 yeah, right? Was July 1990. My kids saw that picture the other day. I said, who is that person? And I said, ask your mother. But uh, Wow. Yeah, we- that was me, newly promoted, a new hire, nine years into the job. And uh, somebody had a sense of humor. Okay. And either to get rid of me or move me on to another area, they promoted me. Okay. Funny enough, I was promoted whilst I was a constable teaching defensive tactics at our own Toronto Police Academy, Toronto Police College. So okay, uh, it created a, an impression upon some. I was successful in a promotional capacity, and that was uh, one of the first few days I had the new stripes, as you put it. Okay. And uh, there you go. Amazing. Well, Steve, you're just the person that I, I wanted to speak with today in regards to this, especially because you had such a big impact in pouring into uh, new police officers' lives to get them ready for the job, okay? Um, my, my only reference to how the police physical standards have moved uh, is back in 1999, I applied to Peel Regional Police, and there was no prep test with them. What they had was an actual one-and-a-half-mile run. You had to do push-ups, pull-ups, 
bench press, sit-ups, the whole nine yards. Flex test, going beyond her toes. All that. That's and, right. and that I found to be a difficult test, oh. but that was a test back then that I trained for and I passed. Right. Now we have the prep test, right. and the prep test is basically a much more simpler version. The person who created the prep test designed it for women and people in their 40s to pass as a baseline. Right. So now we have Philadelphia right now that's lowering their standards, right? And I wanted to get your views today, Steve, on first of all, uh, if we go back to just the origin stories of yourself uh, working with Toronto Police and and basically being involved in the training, just to, just to summarize it, what has been your observations from training back then to what you're hearing and seeing right now? Has there been a fall off? There's been a change. Okay. I don't know if I'd categorize it as a fall off, but there's been a specific change. Absolutely. Going back into the 90s, 2000s, uh, I was a staff trainer. Initially, I was at the Toronto Police College. I would train all aspects of physical skills, certainly for the Toronto Police Service. This would include new recruits, new hires. We would teach pre-Elmer, in other words, before you go to the Ontario Police College to obtain the provincially sanctioned curriculum. I would train you as a bit of a preparatory training program. That would be including firearms. That would include your physical skills, uh, your physical fitness, which we'll get back to that mm -hmm. in a short period of time and get you ready for the college, you know, the big college. Uh, also, upon completion of the Interior Police College, I would have the opportunity to work with you, uh, new recruits, prior to being released into the street or going out to your field training. And that'd be for, turn to remember back, another four or six weeks of additional training after you finish the provincial curriculum. They're going to hone particular skills to provide curriculum that was more consistent with the greater Toronto area and to make certain that you have the reasonable, reasonable skills and the judgment abilities to be able to now to go up for your field training. Uh, also in 2001, 2000, 2001, I was a staff trainer in the defensive tactics section at the Ontario Police College. So not only had the chance to work with recruits prior to coming to college, but certainly by at the Ontario Police College and then post police college mm. by the private down at Elmer and Tarot. So I had the full exposure, if you will, to be able to motivate, to train, to judge and evaluate men and women who have chosen to serve this community and to give them a skill set so they could keep safe, the community keep safe, and they would have a healthy, fruitful career. Steve, let me ask you a question. Why is it important that, wh what is so important about the physical aspect of the job? Like, why is it important for people to be physically, uh, you know, prepared and ready for this job? Yeah, um, you talked about changes. Uh, before I go to that, if I may, yes. segue back to an earlier comment you made about back in 99, I think you said you went for the provincial testing of the time. Yes. And that was a, a test essentially on your physical fitness and your ability. It has morphed, it's altered, it's changed into a prep test. The reason that the initial test that you referenced was removed was because there was people who have perhaps uh, put it forward and became the, a new modicum of thinking that uh, that was not really consistent with the duties, the operational duties of a police officer. Uh, being able to chase a person for a mile and a half, being able to do 50 push-ups, depending on your age, of course, uh, pull-ups and that sort of thing. What's that really got to do with policing? Mm. Policing is you could be chasing people. There could be a struggle. You you may have to jump over a fence to pursue them, that sort of thing. Um, and it's being made a little bit more clear in terms of the steps of evaluation necessary. Mm -hmm. To be able to say, man or woman, you are now able to meet the requirements of those you know particular expectations. That in itself, the fitness component, I'll get back into, but that has not changed. That's not altered. There's still a requirement for a physical prep test as an applicant to be able to come them. But I think you're aware, I think we spoke just recently, and I think you were shocked to find that after you, upon being hired, and other than your initial training at the Ontario Police College, there is no physical standard. There's no licensing component or legislative component, I should say, to maintain your physical fitness. It's a personal, individual choice and commitment. Why? Why is, the, why, why is that? Like, why should there, should there not be someone, like, I know they have to do a uh, firearms, for example, they do. Uh, to every year. They do. So, so why can't they maintain a baseline of physical fitness? If you cross this threshold of, like, let's say weight or you can't pass right. a certain, like, you know, test, you're alleged, why wouldn't they do that? That's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I'm going back, just last week was my 46th anniversary from having joined policing. Okay. So four and a half decades, I have the pleasure of sitting here talking about what was then, what is now, and mm. likely what will be in the future. But certainly, uh, policing has never crossed the threshold of having a legislative authority to mandate you know, that physical fitness standard. There's a physical fitness pin. Uh, a lot of the stations, you know, the detachments throughout the province do offer a place to work out. There's usually fitness facilities available to police officers, highly encouraged. There are some special units, such mm -hmm. as in Toronto, you can speak to the emergency task force, 
or the physical fitness, there's a specific test to meet those requirements to be a tactical officer. Uh, very, very high standard. And the workload, physical workload for them is at an ultimate level of physical fitness. But unfortunately, it's that's not parlayed into individual policing duties or responsibilities. It's a personal call. Mm. And I think there's unfortunately a large number of police officers out there uh, through whatever design or duties or lifestyle commitments, they've let that physical fitness component go. Uh, a little bit further on to this presentation or podcast today, I'd like to talk to you about some of the challenges associated with that, that level of thinking. Mm. And that in itself can be extremely prob problematic. You know, Steve, more and more people, okay, let's just say this. More and more people are scrutinizing police for not being having enough training mm. or not being able to be at a certain level to deal with the public. By reducing the physical... Would that not just automatically less, because you're lessening the standard now, you're also going to lessen the, the skill set of the individual? Well, the standards that are being changed is being two things, actually. It's the educational component. It used to be you need a college or university background degree. You need to be more intellectual. You need to show a, a pattern of ability to think at a, a bit more higher level. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that would have eliminated a lot of people um, good, good candidates, good people within the community have life skills and have good experience in terms of dealing with multicultural situations and adversity, being able to show throughout their exposure as an adult through my just my development over the years that I'm a good candidate because I'm I'm well balanced. I have a good good sense of perspective. I understand the obligations and requirements in the community, and that in itself, believe it or not, is not necessarily associated with a higher level of education. Mm -hmm. Also, depending on where you live, uh, depending on your financial means, you may not be able to afford post-secondary education. Okay. That doesn't necessarily eliminate as a very worthwhile and very successful candidate. So I think with the new um, educational components, this factor that in, there's many people I've spoken to throughout my journey in life that would be an ideal candidate to become a police officer, but they never had the ability or the funds or the time in their life to be able to go to academic, you know, university, college, those sort of skill sets. Mm -hmm. Some people do have the trades and, you know, that sort of thing, but that not be, be an element useful in policing. Okay. Um, that's the first thing. The next one is the costing. Um, a lot of people may not be aware that uh, going to the Ontario Police College was not a freebie you as a candidate would have to pay a fee of $16,000 and a little bit more than that, mm -hmm. and but roughly 16 grand to be able to go there. That's out of the means, financial means of a lot of people, especially lately, you know, with post COVID opportunities, cost of homes, cost of living, um, cost of rent, if you will be, especially we're talking about the greater Toronto area and what it costs you to be able to just successfully live. I don't have an extra $16,000 available to me to invest into a learning program. Now, there are payments available to you. Um, I, certainly to my knowledge mm -hmm. is that in policing in Ontario, uh, prior to that change in that, you know, that financial commitment, uh, you'd be allowed to make payments, a structured payment, That's right. depending on your needs. It could be a year or four or five needs, uh, years to be able to pay off that debt. That's like an educational debt over top of your head. But that did remove a lot of good successful you know, candidates. By Premier Ford's perception was by removing that, now you're opening up the ability um, to be able to take on good candidates without that financial strain or that financial burden. Mm -hmm. Where, quite honestly, a lot of people are struggling just to make ends meet nowadays. And just because your financial struggles should not eliminate you from serving our community. I love that. And look, the, the government already does a lot of things. With like, There's like Second uh, Careers, which yes. is a program. Yes. There's a lot of programs put on the government. So this is great. Now, they also did reduce the baseline of education, meaning you no longer need post-secondary. That's right. You can come out of high school. Now, for those listening, I think you should, I've heard a lot of people look at this as a victory. And sure, I guess you can call it a victory, but I can tell you that police services are still, uh, because this is a very competitive job, if you're you're down to two people and one has post-secondary, one has high school, they're going to most likely pick the individual with post-secondary because it's just more of a skill set than the individual. So it's not just a big plus that you, just because you have no no, no post-secondary you can get through. It's still hard. It's still extremely hard. Yeah. Back when I joined the policing on March 28th, 1978, uh, <laughs> I won't repeat that any louder, but it was interesting because I was described by my trainers at the time that policing is described as 99% sheer boredom interrupted by 1% of sheer horror. Mm. Wow. And I, before I get into this next slide, share with you something that I received up through a presentation from Ontario Chiefs of Police Association and just released in 2021 was talking about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and trauma, mm -hmm. and exposure to trauma and traumatic events. 
and areas where people see things that if you close your eyes, Constantine, the worst possible thing you could think of to deal with with another human being, good people who are wishing to become a police officer may be exposed to. But the Ontario Chiefs of Police Association released some statistics saying that most people in a lifetime will be exposed to four or five incidents of trauma. And that could be a death of a parent, hopefully uh, not ever of a death of a child, death of a loved one, and a significant loss, you know, in your life. That could be a loss of a home mm-hmm. or loss of a job. Right. But in law enforcement, in policing, in first responders, including healthcare and first responders um, and correctional officers, you'll be exposed to trauma in your career between four to 500 times. Wow. Over and over and over. And that creates a real tilt if you'll tilt mm-hmm. in terms of how we see things and respond to things and the residual buildup from a previous experience. Mm-hmm. Why burnout is real. Physical fitness helps you, sir, with that burnout. Mm-hmm. And when I take a training program and I offer a training program to people that I'm meeting for the first time, I find my experience is when I'm getting a little bit tired. And by the way, if I'm taking through a handcuffing program, as you know, we teach those programs or a baton program. Um, I need to get you beyond the point, sir, of feeling a little bit tired or fatigued because that's usually where most people stop. You work out in the gym. You've seen people, usually at what point do they stop? Not when they are maxed out. Mm -hmm. They stop when their comfort level is being broached. They they stop training when they're feeling a little bit tired or they're feeling a little bit of stress and they'll put the weight down. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people work through that barrier to be able to train. And I invite you and I, I promote to please try this. I need to take you to the next level. I'm not being abusive. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm not trying to take you down a path of something you feel uncomfortable with. But you need to take yourself to a limit that you've not been exposed to. What we call the stress inoculation. Mm. I give you a little dose of stress in a win-win situation where you realize, hey, I was able to do that. I, I surprised myself. Right. I did not think I could do that. Welcome to the team. Because mm-hmm. we've got three C's of training. Uh, you need to understand the conception of learning. You need to understand the curriculum. Why am I offering to you? Why am I doing something repetitious over and over and over? Not to bore you, sir. Right. I value your time, but to create the environment of muscle memory and to be able to do something over and over for different applications and different levels of fatigue. I need to get your heart rate up. Right. Spike your heart. Get your blood pressure up. Most people, when they're exposed to that stimulus, they sit down. Those who are physically fit work through those, those challenges at mm-hmm. all times. Uh, why? That will lead to confidence. A person believes in themselves and they believe that they have this personal belief system that I am able to manage this. You're not going to knock me down. You're not going to defeat me. And I don't need to be uh, use excessive force to control you or to use something that people could view to be excessive or extreme. Mm. And that, sir, leads to professional contact, which we call confidence. Okay. You know, and it's interesting because I just saw this recent video. You know, some people say, oh, I'm getting a little too old for that, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm 65 and out there slugging it you know, through my, my workouts. Mm-hmm. And I just saw this recent video here of a gentleman, 77 years old, training in mixed martial arts club, and he's not stopping. And just to read this, you know, next time you're thinking about skipping, lifting, or training because you're too tired mm-hmm. or too sore, right? or maybe my, my chest is a little sore today, I'm not feeling up to today. Uh, think about this old guy uh, who showed up to spar today. He called me over from across the mat to work and got in there with every person put in front of him. He didn't complain a single time. He won all the smoke from everybody. I tag him, but I don't think he's on social, actually he is on social media, but he's 77. And uh, Victor Morton, Victor J. Morton, and uh, God love him, he's good inspiration. Right. I'd like to play this video here for who was ever out thinking, today's not a good day to train. Right. Um, here is, I call this mature sparring it's from a 77 year man. Let's take a look at this guy. Look at him. He's still very aware, man. He's, he is. Yeah. He talked about environmental awareness and yeah. tactical awareness. Yeah. And my goodness, I think he puts uh, can put a lot of people to shame. Absolutely. Now, nobody's tagging him coming at him, but look at him moving around. He's bobbing, he's yeah. weaving, he's slipping shots, out there performing. Yeah. And age is just a number, isn't it, Constantine? That's all it is. That's all it is. It's amazing. It's, this is a testament to, as you said, you know, people that don't want to go to the gym or people that feel like, yeah, I'm too tired or people feel I don't need this. You know, we talk about lifespan. It should be health span, right? How long do you want to maintain that life longevity, right? You do. Yeah. Not so it only gets you through the stressors and the rigors, you know, of shift work and fatigue and whatnot. But just think about it. You may not have a good night's sleep. And I'm not looking for any adverse. I'm not looking for a stoker fight. And something goes awry. Something changes in your life. And suddenly you're responding to a 911 call, a hot shot. Right. And I'm speaking to my former peers, my colleagues, 
and people who are serving our community. You got to have the, the parts, the smarts, and the ability to take you through um, risk and adversity that other people don't. And that starts at the gym. That starts at you. You have the best version of yourself 24-7 because sometimes even though you're not prepared to engage, perhaps the person in front of you is. Okay. And are you ready? Are you okay. prepared? Steve, I will not accept physical fitness is something that should be dropped and dismissed. You're teaching people to get... <laughs> you're creating a room where people could die because okay. of that decision. So so th this is the part, like, you know, the article says here, uh, as it says, they are... Uh, the police department, they're saying, is basically seeing this as a uh, a great thing, almost, because they're getting more people coming through. I don't understand the thinking behind it. I mean, we just heard about why it's so important to have uh, the physical maintained at a high level, right? So to loosen that, they're, they're, they're thinking as well, we can get more people in because there is a need, right? The reality is, if you get a whole bunch of people coming in, that are passing on a standard that's being lowered, how does that translate on the job? Meaning as in, they're going to be put in situations where they're almost being set up to fail. That's how I look at it as. I would not disagree with that. Let me change. I agree with that. Yes. And the issue is, um, once you have a lower physical fitness standard category, how do we assess the impact on the workforce? Uh, perhaps more injuries. In Ontario, we call it WSIV. We have the inability for people to return to work because of injuries. Um, I have heard and I've seen people injure themselves by they drop their pen, they bend over, pick up their pen, and they throw their back out. They get out of the car and uh, they hurt themselves. Or simple tasks of day-to-day um, -day duties in law enforcement, mm -hmm. with a basic level or decent level of physical fitness, you don't have those issues. And let's talk about stress. Let's talk about burnouts. Let's talk about PTSD. Uh, I won't say a number, but I'm aware of a shocking, alarming number currently in Toronto of good people who are overwhelmed by what they were exposed to and they'll never return to active duty. And uh, we gotta learn, we have to learn to provide a level of support. I think that starts off with, you know, we talk about the Sentinel mindset. Well, I think what we need to have a look at here too is a bulletproof mind in terms of probably the worst uh, risk that we can have, which is sometimes ourselves. Mm -hmm. We dismiss a standard or we dismiss a goal that's being set not to be abusive or punitive but to keep a level of safety for you and others that you may have to work with. And why you want that dismissed, why are you prepared to come into a program that will let that go mm -hmm. and not take your safety into account? Um, to me, that's a major sin. I'm not trying to be religious or political here, but you are creating a room where good people are going to get hurt or worse. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the thing that's concerning about this is that uh, you're probably not going to see the effects of this until a couple of years later or a couple of months later, uh, until people are actually on the jobs now and you know, uh, and, and, they're dealt, and they're dealing with situations and this data will come out delayed. So again, whatever decision is being made right now, it, 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 we, we don't see the results of it yet. We won't see the results. You know? And it's not the other thing too, is if I'm tired or I'm sore, I'm hurt, I might just book off my shift, I might call in sick. Right, right. And it's lost hours. So we have a, um, a compensated peace officer who is reporting off duty, it's gotta be backfilled. Often that it's not backfilled in the street. You know, like you being a security owner, if you have a guard reporting off duty for whatever site that you're working at, usually you have to backfill that. But when there is no other candidates, you could run short with that police officer for that night. It's not a question, there's nobody filling fill in the, uh, the mm -hmm. blanks. Mm -hmm. So we have an inability for that reserve, if you will, to come out there. So you're gonna have a, a limited calls for service availability. You're going to have officers who are counting on backup. Uh, I don't know about you, if you and I are working an event, I'm not being an advocate for anything here other than appropriateness. I want you to be reasonably fit if you're gonna be backing me up. And I want to be able to count on Constantine to be able to realize that if there's a physical struggle, I can count on your ability. Okay. Uh, and I think you have the right and the expectation to count on me. If I'm gonna work with you here today is that you realize that I can help control and manage the situation without hurting members of the public, being ethical, being moral, being empathetic. And, uh, that's a different podcast that we can okay. certainly speak to, right. but not overreacting and not backing off because of my physical inability to support you. There's nothing worse. I would not be able to look you in the eye if I thought that my physical fitness or lack of was uh, a reason as to why you could be injured at work or exposed to something that could have been handled differently. Okay, so let me ask you this, Steve, just to kind of close. That's fair, what I'm saying? 100%. To, to close as, as a last question right now, I've invited you uh, to, to join uh, our committee right now, representing all the police services, and, uh, you know, we're going to be discussing now the opportunity to lower the standard to invite more people in. 
Um, we're bringing you in, Steve, to ask you today, uh, do you think we should do this? And if not, what shall we do? What should we do uh, based on your experience? What would be that advice you'd give us today? No. Okay. No. Clearly no. Do not drop that standard. Increase the standard. I believe that a fitness component should be become a legislative requirement. Okay. I think certainly there should be the opportunity for police officers to train, um, perhaps even a higher scale, scale of pay is an incentive to work out. Mm -hmm. I can't give you the numbers and I do recognize that, you know, police services are strapped through community budgets. I'm full of, fully aware of that. Right. But if there is a an advantage to you, whatever it might be, other than just your own profile and ability to be able to manage things, if you have an incentive, uh, it could be you know, extra day off here and there, it could certainly be a top up, perhaps, you know, certainly pay for your fitness, that sort of thing. I think those would be great means to, that we'd need to look at this community. Okay, I love that. Well, Steve, I'm very happy that we had a chance to speak about this. I feel that, uh, you know, knowledge is power and obviously being physically fit is power as well. It right? is. So work out and stay safe. That's, That's right. absolutely it. Absolutely. That's it. So we're hoping that this doesn't come to Canada in the sense, I mean, in the sense of like the, a standard being lowered. Right. Um, and we do want to see uh, amazing uh, individuals that want to protect and serve those and, uh, you know, as I, I'm very impressed, Steve, that you said that you're at the age of 65 and you're maintaining a very physically healthy lifestyle. That, that, that's amazing. And that's kind of what I, I've, I'm aspiring to as well for, for numerous reasons. The other thing is this, which we didn't touch upon, uh, but it, there's many, many studies that also tell you that being just be, by being physically fit or going to the gym regularly would also help your anxiety, stress levels, depression, oh, moods, sleep, all that ability stuff. for sleeping patterns yes. to be able to get a deep sleep. And those are, and to come back from injury, I, I'll share this with you publicly. A lot yes. of people don't know this to me. Eight years ago, I had a heart attack. Oh, wow. And um, I kind of struggled one day, uh, eight years ago, and it was on a Sunday night, wasn't feeling well. So if, if you're having a heart attack, first thing to do is take a warm, hot bath. Yeah. Didn't go away. I had to go to my wife and say, uh, we know what hospital, think I'm having a heart attack. I was right. Uh, they quickly took me in. They realized that we need cardiac intervention. 24 hours later, I had a stent put in. I was 90% blocked on my, my right side. You put a stent in. And because of my fitness level, the cardiologist told me that because of your fitness, you survived. Wow. And it was interesting because the following three days later, I went to, I don't mind saying Scarborough Centenary for the cardio rehab. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I went through an epiphany. I was shocked because I just had finished working out like a day before my heart attack. And I was looking around as to what we need to get you up to. What do we need to get me up to? Well, we need to get you up to a level of fitness again. I'm good to go. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, fixed. It's mm -hmm. like you take your car to the mechanic and they fixed it. My engine's good. Yeah. So, well, we need to a little bit of weight training. Okay. I, I, I went down there 24 hours after stand. I, I benched over 220 or something. Like, yeah. You're out of here. And they said, well, you have to get up to walking. Okay, let's run. Mm. Uh, let's test. Let's, I want to ask if there's a warranty on my, yeah, yeah. my step because yeah. I said, Come, let's just see what it is. So they got a little bit panicky and the gentleman was with me. I called the cardiologist and saw my results from my fitness. Gradually, I graduated from cardio rehab. Continue doing what you're doing, and uh, you'll be well. But here's a couple of things I point out there is, uh, yeah, I had a heart attack. I have a stint in. So mm -hmm. I'm a heart patient, but I, I found it annoying and troubling for me. It affected my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. My lifestyle saved me. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't prevent the heart attack. That's genetic, by right. the way, as I found right. out. Right. Uh, genetic heart disease, but it, it it allowed me to get back quickly and right. back into what I'm doing. I was back in the gym within a few days. Amazing. So Amazing. I put that out there because it's real. No smoke and mirrors, no political crap, not trying to sell you anything other than a commitment to yourself. Okay. Well, Steve, I really want to thank you for, for, for shedding this. Uh, it's uh, amazing to hear your journey and how you were able to pour into so many people that are uh, probably, I mean, back when, when we were doing this, what year? 1978, I started. So when you when did you start training uh, at oh, CO? I started start training where? At CO Vic, when you were, oh, when you were, when you were instructing. I was training in 89, in 89. teaching in 89. So basically those people are probably getting ready, getting ready to retire probably oh, in the next so. couple of years. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting too. I work a lot of events, a lot yes. of events, and young, young officers are coming up to me, shake my hand. I know you. Oh, how do you know? Because you used to work with my dad. Wow, wow. And, oh my God. I say something usually a bit rude or crude. I won't say <laughs> it in the podcast, but yeah. it's, it's nice to see you. And they say my dad uh, says hello, says okay. respect. Good, man. Well, Steve, yeah. thank you for coming down. Thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, get a glimpse of the physical side of things. This is very interesting stuff. We'll have all the links. And uh, for those also, just to be aware, uh, Steve does have a, an incredible training program called Stay Safe. 
and uh, 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 there's physical aspects to it as well. Staysafeip.com is where you want to check out to get more information on that. And once again, Steve, thank you for coming down. Thanks, Carl. So until we meet again, take uh, care. Stay absolutely. Safe. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers, Have a great day. Take care. Thank you for joining me in today's podcast. This podcast was created for protectors in the fields of law enforcement, executive protection, security, and anyone looking to level up their mindset. If you are learning from this podcast and you're enjoying it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at The Sentinel Mindset. That's a zero cost way to support us. In addition, please subscribe to the podcast both on Spotify and Apple. And on both Spotify and Apple, you can leave us up to a five star review. If you have questions for me or comments about the podcast, or guests you would like me to consider on The Sentinel Mindset, please post all comments on YouTube. I do read all the comments. Please also check out our sponsors, thearenatoronto.com. The Arena was created to help all those in the fields of law enforcement, security, and all that achieve their fitness goals. I want to thank our producer, Matthew Doyle, and creative supports, Jasleen Singh, who helped me with this podcast every week. We value your feedback and are here to support you. Tune into The Sentinel Mindset every week where we look in the mirror to make real changes and explore what it takes to achieve greatness in your craft. This podcast is brought to you by Executive Protection Lifestyle Canada. Make sure to drop by next week and don't forget to subscribe. 